What's up guys? So this week we're going into the Fortran package manager. Now the other week I went into how to make a make file and the Fortran package manager, also known as the FPM, is something along those lines. A piece of software that allows you to compile your code down, link to other standard libraries such as LAPAC or BLAS. It also allows for linking to other third-party libraries that use the FPM. So it's something that really brings that modern word to modern Fortran. <laughs> We're going to go more into, into what that is, but if that all sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe. Okay, so I was in the terminal before, but first we're going to actually look at the repository and kind of go through the installation process a little bit. Now there are a couple ways to install this project. One is you can just do the binary download and you will have the file and you can just work with the binaries. I actually did it through Anaconda and that's the process that I'm going to go through. Now, if you don't have Anaconda, this is another link and I'll post all these links in the description down below. But these are the step-by-steps for installing Anaconda. First, you just download the file, turn it into executable, and then you run the installation script. You can actually omit this step because this is what we're gonna do with the FPM anyways, so you can just ignore this part. So at this point, I'm just gonna assume that you have Conda installed. And if you do, you should see this base here. Now I'm gonna be working from this step onward, and then I'm gonna show more how to use the FPM and how to integrate it with some of your Fortran code. First command that they give you is adding a channel, and this really just gives Conda access to the Forge channel so that you can have access to the FPM to install it. Add that, in my case, I already have it in the list, so it's just giving me a warning, but you should do that and get no output. Now the next step is creating an environment, which is that create-n fpm fpm. So in this case, we're creating an environment called fpm, and in that we're installing the package called fpm, which is the Fortran package manager. Okay, so now if you're done installing, you say you can see these are all the packages it installs, and then they even tell you how to activate it, which is pretty much the next step of what the documentation says. So let's go into that environment, so conda activate. Okay, so now we have the FPM, and now if you just run FPM, you'll get this. So this is all the list of commands, and this is everything that it can do. Now just for our, our hello world with FPM, you can actually just do new, and we'll call it FPM test. And you can see it shows you all the commands of what it just did. So it created this directory, do an ls, go to FPM test. So if we run FPM again, we can see all the commands. And the next step we can actually do is do FPM build. Now this is, this is starting to get into the cool parts of what the FPM can do. Now this is a pretty simple project, but you can see that the FPM is designed with all these flags already. So it has all these warning flags. It has a dash G flag, so you can debug it later. And it's also creating some directories. So these are the build directories. If we're looking back up again, so we have an FPM run and an FPM test. So FPM run, and that ran our code. We have hello FPM test, and if we did FPM, FPM test, <laughs> put some tests here. So this, this is the unit testing stuff. If we, see a FPM run, that's what that is what the program runs, which if we go back into app and main, it says it calls this function here. So let's let's go into that. And that it just prints out this. And so it's just printing out hello and the name of the project. So you can see it already linked it it linked a module to the program and it ran it all in just a, a simple go. Now the test directory is where all the unit testing happens. Here, we don't really have anything to test because it's just a print, but this is where you would put all your asserts or anything that you need to have checked out whenever you make changes to your code. Now, let's go into the TOML file a little bit. So we have the TOML here. So our TOML file is pretty basic. We have the name of the project, its version, the license, our author, so all, all of this stuff. So this is the pretty standard stuff that you usually want on your project. And then there's these headers. So we have this build, these are what it adds, and then this install, library equals false. Now going back to the documentation here, just so you guys know where to look, this, this covers a lot of different aspects. It's covering the how to, how to create a new project and how to run tests and everything. Now, these are the other two documents you also really wanna look at. So I already have them opened right here. 
Now, FPM manifest. This is the documentation that actually describes how the Tama works. It describes the keywords, any of the headers that you need, and if you're trying to add any extra stuff. But like here, we have a build link. If we want to link BLAS and, and, or link LAPAC, this shows a simple way of how to do that. And we would just add this in here, which that's going to be our next test right now. And then the other aspect is all these dependencies. So FPM actually has a registry of what FPM projects are on there. And if there's a project on there that's some third party user created and you want to add it to your project, you can do that now. So it's the same idea as pip where if you, let's say you wanted to use numpy, you would have to do pip install numpy or whatever. And then your code would have that dependency. This is that same idea where now there's a registry and everything is being a bit more centralized and it's a really cool thing because this is probably the thing about Fortran is it seems pretty disjoint besides the main projects that everyone uses, right? So like BluePoc, BLAS, FFTW, all those main ones everyone knows there's all this Fortran code out there that is pretty disjoint right now, unless you just go searching through GitHub. Now with the FPM, there's projects on there already. You can have access to them. If you have a cool project, if you want to throw it up in there, you can do that too. And people can have access to your code. And it's this cool thing that really just starts bringing the Fortran community a lot more together. We go into here, FPM packaging. This goes through more examples of how you would compile a single project. And then also it just kind of goes more into just some of the Tomo file and some descriptions. So these are the main three files you want to look at. It's the readme, manifest, and the packaging. That's the documentation. The website also has some information, but these, these are the main three that you want to use. Okay. So just to show another example, I did another test FPM and now this is actually the same main f 90 and mod underscore learn code that, that I used in those previous Fortran videos. In here, I actually added a little bit more code. So let's go into it and you can see what I did. So I'm still importing that mod learn, but now I'm also doing this small little operation where on this complex matrix, I'm using this function zgetrf. If you don't know the syntax, this is actually a subroutine that's from the LaPac library. So this is an operation that will be performed on the matrix and do some stuff and then I'm gonna print it out. What, what operation does doesn't really matter in this case. I'm more just showing that we're able to call this function because I have it linked in the TOML. So let's go into that. Back in the TOML, I have source directory. So here, this is where all my source code is. This is my executable, the main.90. And then here I have it linked with the BLAS and the LAPAC library. So this is pretty much exactly the same that we saw in the manifest. So in here, I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna do FPM build, I'm do FPM run, and it did it, right? We got no errors. It was able to call the library. It didn't say there's undefined reference or anything. This is the first output. So this is the matrix before the call to the library. We got the second output. This is the matrix after the call. Okay, so all this is really cool. When when I got this the first work, it was just just pogs in the chat everywhere. I was super excited. Working with Fortran code, I I try to work with modern Fortran and finding these cool projects, especially this one, just really brings Fortran just up and up up back again. Not to say that it was ever gone, but I feel like that it's very hidden and really only people in academia know about it. <laughs> But with this Fortran package manager, I feel that it's going to connect a lot of the community together and can really bring a lot of code down in the repositories and just everyone can find everything else. Okay. I don't know where I'm going with this. Either way, the point is I'm excited. This is very cool. I'm actually trying to apply this to my research code and I'm going to compile it, start adding all my unit testing into it. And it just really seems like it's able to just keep everything together. Okay, that's what I have for you this week. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. The IG and Twitter links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have any requests for what to cover in the future, please post them in the comment sections below. Tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.